start again. Welcome to the survivors. Uh, just one more problem before starting. I will uh, ask you to circulate this list and write down the names as part of the taking the slide. And I will uh, ask uh, speakers to remain for five minutes after in order to sign some kind of papers. Okay, and now, ah, and also if you don't know this issue of ethnicity uh, gun uh, on Romanian Roma, here it is. Maybe we'll have a next one after this conference. Okay, so let's start now with the second section and with Martin Oliveira's presentation. Already quoted by Julia in extenso. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything else to say. He made, she made already an introduction. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation and got to present my paper here in Eucharist. And secondly, I want to apologize for my English accent, because right now it's okay, but after 10 minutes you will say my French. <laughs> so, um, here is a fact that seems solidly established. So-called Roma travelers, former European ethnic minority, they have their divisions and committees in, in the European institutions. They have recently been the subject of uh, two summits in the UA presidency and among other initiatives, they have a decade for their inclusion. Similarly, the Romi in Romania are one of the 20 national minorities recognized by the 1990 constitution. Uh, and it's indeed the category of ethnicity, ethnie, which is mobilized in official documents, particularly in the 2002 national census, along with other natural characteristics, gender, age, and so forth. Um, apart from socio-economic issues, uh, this official recognition of the status of ethnic or national minority aims to highlight the history and culture of Roma communities in order to break with the image of marginal groups structured by anomaly. In short, it tends to positive Roma identity, too often defined by default of integration, of culture, of morality, of health, and so on. Nonetheless, uh, here as elsewhere, some laudable initiatives do not always raise the ignorance and just give it new forms and new expressions. I will try to show here that the way Gypsy societies define their contours and the quality of their members do not match with the ethnic approach, approaches of human diversity. And I want to quote Michael Stewart, who wrote, In Europe, it has become one sort of taken for granted facts that everyone nowadays has an ethnic identity in the sense of more or less primordial ventures and traditional identity into which he or she was born. My extended experience in India, still was one, and shorter trips elsewhere in Eastern Europe have convinced me that, without the exception of the educated gypsy intellectuals who run the wrong political parties, the wrong do not have any ethnic identity. This is not a provocation. I will try to explain myself. So I, I totally agree with Michael Stewart, and I think it's very important. It is a very important question that should be seriously addressed. Because, in my opinion, our job as anthropologists is to understand. And how could we understand anything if our categories are not appropriate? I don't have potential to give a definitive answer to this question here, but I try to give some elements in order to open the discussion. Moreover, beyond the scientific ambition for better understanding of social cultural realities, today's social and political context is not innocent for the reasons which can lead to interrogate Roma ethnicity. To define or to recognize the existence of a particular objective human group in order to conduct a specific policy for it is indeed not trivial at all. Of course, <coughs> the gypsy policy, the politic Zigan, said Henrietta Seo, exists within the European states at least in the 19th century, with the negative or dramatic effects we all know here. But the today novelties lies in the international, coordinated, and explicitly institutionalized form of those policies. Assuming that the gypsies 
Roma, Gypsy, Sinti and other troubles objectively form an ethnic group and therefore need specific policies. In this way, those policies are, at least officially, based on a positive knowledge. Studies, reports, experts, committees and so on have never been so numerous than during the past 15 years. Science is thus invited in front of the public arena as a rational guarantee motivating or justifying the policies implemented. Scientists are therefore legitimate to raise and develop the debate on the subject, recalling that the knowledge they produce is fundamentally nuanced, contradictory, and that it can never be seen as a definitive evidence. So, in the current climate of economical, social, and political tensions, it seems urgent, in my point of view, to promote the nuanced perspectives and analysis produced by researchers in order to, in order to better deconstruct yeah. the patterns which erect Roma gypsies as a public issue that must be addressed. So, from my work with the Gallery of Transylvania, the thread of this communication will be held around three questions. First, do the Roma in Romania conform with the primordialist definition of ethnic, ethnic groups? Second, do the Roma in Romania comply with the circumstantialist approach of ethnicity? And thirdly, what can be deduced for the study of Roma realities? First point. So, according to the dictionary, an ethnic group is, I quote, a set of people who share a number of characteristics of civilization, including language. This definition corresponds to the common opinion about the ethnic group seen as a natural society characterized by cultural patterns and specific heritage and so on. And Christine Taylor notes, however, that, I quote her, the new terminology that is developed in the 19th colonial century and where the term ethnic group is a central element aims to put in their place the concurrent populations to divide and confine them in univocal territorial and cultural definitions. And quoting the famous work of Jean-Louis Ancel and uh, Elikia and Bocolo, she concludes, it appears that the crystallization of ethnic, group, of ethnic groups have always referred to processes of political, economic or ideological domination from a group to another. Indeed, the primor primordialist or substantivist definition of ethnic groups has been radically questioned, questioned by, in anthropology over the past 30 years. But researchers are almost the only ones to, to take for granted this deconstruction. In an exemplary way, the definition of the national minority used by the Romanian constitution fits perfectly with the essentialist perception, perception of human society. The third article writes, the term national minority means any community of Romanian citizens living in the territory of Romania, at least for 100 years, with its own national, ethnic, cultural and religious identity, and which is numerically lower than the majority populations and wants to preserve, express and promote its identity. So, if we temporarily submit to such a definition, a conception of collective identities, what could be, in the case of Roma and Romania, this national, ethnic, cultural and religious identity which constitutes them as a distinct group. Of course, we can fight a national type a discourse among Roma politicians and NGOs based on the idea of a common Indian origin, but fieldwork always shows that those considerations meet much more echoes within the various institutions and the media than in the lo local Roma communities. For example, the Indian origin does not make any sense for the government. And when sometimes they evoke the idea because they heard about it on television, as everybody, or read it in the newspaper, this is only to divert it in their own way, saying, we, yes, perhaps, we come from India, implied, if you say so, don't matter. But they, the other gypsies over there, they come from Africa, that's why they are wild, ugly, and dirty. I have heard many times this kind of argument, in a sense very different from the common and unifying origin. More fundamentally, I will not insist too much here about the diversity of Roman and Roma, but I will just underline that this diversity is both social, cultural, religious, linguistic, etc. and is directly produced by the deep integration of those groups in Romanian history in its own diversity. Of course, some groups are similar, 
because of historical and geog geographical proximity. For example, there is a lot of similarities between the Garbori and the Churari from the valley of the Tuna. But these groups are also have many in common with, them, with their neighbors, Romanian or Hungarian, and often much more with them than with other Roma living in remote areas. So if we wanted, however, to identify the Roma cultural groups, <coughs> carrying a specific identity, we should realize a mapping of the very local communities. Roma in such area from those villages, sharing clothing customs and the same local history, speaking the same Romanes, etc. etc. From this point of view, the Garbori appear to form the perfect group. They are all from an identified area, a network of villages in the department of Mures. They speak Romanes the same way, marked by significant Hungarian influences. They wear a traditional costume on their own, on their own as we saw. They have a traditional business, the cover sheet metal work, especially guttering. And they are almost all Catholics or Evangelicals, Pentecostal, Adventist, Baptist or Jehovah's Witnesses. And they, and one more cultural part, and they practice marriage with dowry and have noble languages. The Pizzi. In summary, those Roma know now have all the usual attributes of an ethnic group. A specific ethnony, a territory of origin, language, tradition seen as specific, clothing, work, marriage, and so on, and they comply in their speeches, or to the attention of the authors at least, with the primordialist ideology and its conception of human societies. However, for Garbori, like for any other human group, a historical perspective shows that the cultural patterns are never still rocks, even those erected into national symbols. Indeed, the researches show how these authentic and traditional Roma have literally reinvented their traditions, at least the visible part, dress, work, and significantly ethnonym itself, over the last 40 years. For example, the traditional work of guttering developed in the family from the 1960s, 40, 60 years ago, and the elderly learned their skills from bosses or friends among the gage not from their own ancestors. The broad black hat appeared only in the 1890, just before revolution, and the growth of its ages has not been completed to date. And the ethnonym Gabor itself seems to have, to have spread among, among the Roma over the last 30 years. So really, it is never used into the intersect, but only in relations with Gage usually as a positive lover, that of traditional and respectable gypsies. Finally, a, a detailed study of Gabori's cultural patterns demonstrates the deep integration of those Roma in the history and the cultural context. The kinship organization, as well as their traditional clothing, for example, directly refer to the realities of Romanian and Transylvanian space. But if the Roma, <coughs> just as any other human group, in fact, cannot be characterized by a cultural heritage that will be definitely original and clean. Maybe they have in common an ethnicity, a way to assert themselves collectively, represented by common ethnic boundaries. And I got the second point. Does the Roman Romania fit with the approach of Frederick Bars of the ethnic groups? As we know, a, a significant break was made in anthropology in the study of ethnic identity with the work of Frederick Bars and his followers. Rather, rather than looking at ethnic groups as being defined by a substance, Bars asks for the study of ethnicity, defined as the different ways in which cultural differences are made relevant for social organization. Hence, the focus is shifted from the definition of the group per se to the ethnic boundaries as the strategic location of the collective affirmations. It takes place in interaction with the others. And that's a perspective that may seem more appropriate to capture all the Romanian Roma in one look. If they are not all objectively similar, they would have in common to self-identify themselves as Roma. But again, things are not so simple. <coughs> First, such an approach excludes de facto the groups whose members don't speak Romanes and therefore never accept as Roma, but only as Tsigani or Tsigani in Hungarian places. 
Moreover, members of the communities where Romanes is used may not hear the same thing by the phrase we, the Roma, Ame or Roma. Returning to the Gabor example, when they say we, the Roma, they mean we, the Gabor. That's it. So obvious, obvious in their eyes, this we only refer, refers to the peers, not to a broad category itself composed of subcategories. In other words, Gabori does not represent themselves as a minority among the minority, but as a proper and original nation, Nazi, as they say. Moreover, the Gabori maintains various ethnic boundaries, leading us far from a simple face-to-face -face between Roma and Gage. Here are the different kinds of otherness according to those Roma. The most numerous are the Gage, of course, but the use of the term varies depending on the context. It may designate only the close vicinity, or all the, of the people of Romania defined as non gypsies or even all people, and the telenovelas characters included, conforming to the Western stereotypes of the modernity. Moreover, th there is even within the broad gadget category a host of separate subcategories considered more or less close to the gallery. The Transylvanian, the Hungarian, the Sekler, the Moldovan, the Pushteni, Olden, and so on. Second category of otherness for the Gabori are the very strange others, Africanuri and Kinesuri, the Africans and the Asians, who are the figures of a radical otherness. They are not even Gage at all, they can't be. It's only, and it's not only the skin color that determines the classification, because some Gage are Afro American people or Asian on the television, but the perceived lifestyle that is too far from the modern lifestyle. Thirdly, you have the negative authors, the Rumunguri, defined as gypsy failures, that also gypsy says as Kashtale. They, for the Gabori, they have no language, they are only supposed to speak Gashikanes, here Hungarian, so the name for Mongoli. And they have no culture, they have no morality, and so on. And the Romongoli play for the Gabori the role of the anti society, threatening the Roma way of life, the Romanes and its virtues. One more kind of the other, the local but exotic authors, the Tserhari, Cortorari. Suppose, suppose nomadic gypsies living in tents. They are seen as backward Tsigani, with whom business relationship and even friendship can be maintained, but not enough to marry them. They are too strange, in the government's point of view. Then you can find the close authors, the Churari and the Jujuvai, some gypsies from nearby areas, for whom the label Roma is more readily granted. Also, the government prefer to use this specific ethnonym to distinguish them from, this real, from the real similars. But nevertheless, in some families, the boundary sometimes seems more confusing according to the marriages. And finally, the essential same order. Indeed, within the Gabor nation, there are distinctive kinship groups, the Vici, like agnatic lineages, preferentially endogamous. The system of the Vici allows the continuation of the logic of prestige of, and nobility within the families and motivates for the Gabori the special nature of the nation and their undergang. So, this could be a quick definition of the Gabor ethnicity. These ethnic boundaries, highly variable and very manipulated in context, of course, are by definition specific to the Gabori since they include themselves as such in this game of mirrors. It is also necessary to clarify that those classified. Is it also necessary to clarify that those classified by the Gabori as Bumunguri or Tsarhari do not form real social groups? Such a typology of otherness is valid uh, then only for the Gabor. So, from a circumstantialist perspective, according to Bars, we can consider that the Gabori are indeed an, indeed an ethnic group, despite a few nuances among individuals and families they order in the same way the vast field of the others. It appears, however, really difficult to define a common ethnicity manipulated by all the Romans in Romania. As a common point, at the very least, perhaps we could consider that all Roma mobilize the same category, that of Gage. Again, 
This will mean to exclude all those who don't speak Romanex and, by definition, do not use the term. More fundamentally, the example of the Garbori shows that the category of gage is relative and changing. According to the group and the context, it does not specifically refer to the same social cultural realities. Otherwise, this is further the intimacy with the local gage, amare gage, our gage, which motivates the specific identity of one Roma group much more than a binary logic of opposition. Therefore, the recurrence of the distinction Roma Gage does not, doesn't produce a homogenization of the Roma identity, but causes a perpetual diversification of the local communities. So the Gabori do not build their national pride by a continual differentiation with the Gage, but rather against the Romunguri, and also less pronounced and more ambiguous, against the Tsepari, their own categories. Then we can see that each gypsy community organizes the otherness in its own way, without complying with the gypsyologist schemes by which all gypsy Roma form a meaningful category. We can find, as seen in the Gabor case, some local proximities and the extension of the Rome quality to other groups that are not strictly similar, but it's important that at no time this extension corresponds to the category of gypsy as defined for over 200 years by the Gage. So what? Third part. So their only common point would it not ultimately to be regarded as Tsigani or in recent years Romi. But is it enough to produce a feeling of solidarity or membership? In other contexts, some authors observed this mechanism, for example, the Latinos in the USA. But the study of gypsy societies shows that such a process is not systematic. The Gabori have always been seen as Tsigan. So far, it has not produced a widespread solidarity towards all those groups also identified this way. In their own case, we can even see that the omnipresence of the Roma issue on the Romanian and European public stage during the past 20 years has only increased their desire to stand out from those that the majority society perceives as their ethnic brothers. In my opinion, the, dominating, the dominated may come to integrate the discourse of the dominant in their own self-identification if both groups share the same logic of definition of collective identities or, in other words, the same ontological mechanism. And maybe here is, and some might say finally, something in common among gypsy groups. It seems that there is something which helps to keep the majority's discourse in its place, without giving it full control over the definition of the ontology of the community. The Roma know that the Gage are wrong about them, and it's perfectly normal since they are Gage. A parallel can be made quickly with what uh, Philippe Descola calls in his works on the ontology the assumed misunderstanding, the qui propos assumé. This assumed misunderstanding is, for him, a fundamental characteristic of the animic ontology, while our so-called modern societies are governed by the naturalistic ontology. For us, as moderns, social moderns in the not historical evolutionist meanings in uh, in the Descola's meaning. For us as moderns, social and cultural diversity is a problem. That's why we are anthropologists. That must be uniquely solved. Its spaces must be characterized per se with distinctive attributes on a common framework. According to Descola, in the anemic ontology, and I'm quoting him, and I'm sorry for the translation, it's even difficult in France, in French, I feel myself as a member of the species A, not only because I differ from the members of the species B by clear attributes, but because the mere existence of B allows me to know me different, different because it doesn't have on me the same point of view as mine. In sum, the perspective of the presumed classifier has to be absorbed by the classified so he can truly see himself as separate from him. One more time in other words, for Gypsy and for other societies in the world, otherness 
is not the problem as for us, it is the solution. In this perspective, there is no need of a strong collective discourse about our identity to maintain a dynamic culture as long as every social relation with the others, both positive and negative, is a proof and a recall of my collective membership. In other words, there is no danger at all to develop a deep intimacy with the environment, even if the others, here is the gadget, all the totality of the economic and political power, and here again the Gabori are a very good example. I have no time to develop, but they are traditional because they are fundamentally and personally integrated to the Transylvanian and Romanian history and society. So in conclusion, perfect. it is often said that, that the term Rome means man. There is much more. Gender, social status and collective membership are perfectly inseparable in the same form. Rome refers more to the idea of a married man among the peers, and the among the peers is very important, and those peers do not form an abstract, <coughs> undefined category. The society consists of a given set of identifiable individuals connected to each other. Nobody never knows everyone directly, and the limits of such, of such social networks are still unclear. It's all a matter of relative position. But the idea of a finish interlacing in which all individuals may be related and identified by blood and marriage is sufficient Sufficient. sufficient to maintain the tautological identity. We are similar because our parents were and that our children will be. Significantly, when Gabor is indirected uh, questioning about the identity of another Gabor, he doesn't ask who is it, but this one, which one is it? Kodosavoy, not Koni. Similarly, the systematic use of pronouns before the defined names, o yanko e veta, the yanko the veta, emphasizes the idea of a finite, finite, close group of individuals. And from this point of view, the Romanist term Roma is not, strictly speaking, an ethnonym. It does not refer to a generic affiliation, but to the social and personal daily experience. To come back, my last three words. Uh, to the political context, to make a link. If to my eyes we want Roman studies to be useful against anti gypsyism then we should not take for granted our object. The Roma gypsy entity should not be seen as a base and a reason for our observations and analysis, but as a contextual category manipulating in different kinds of ways and directions, only understandable in context. Okay. Thank you. Well, questions and not too many comments because on such a topic. Yeah, later. No, but on such a topic we can have uh, we can argue for half a year. Uh, so please, first question comment. Thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting to see how the boundaries are constructed. Uh, there are some people behind my questions that we don't seem to work on a traditional uh, Roma aspect. And we've asked the question as to the hierarchy, perceived hierarchy between groups. And in every case, we found that they themselves uh, say that they are among the, the highest, obviously. And they do construct negative. Gabor don't say that they are the real Roma. Speaking Roman, they say we are Roma and Roma, Roma and Roma. We are the Rome, Rome. This is a tautology. That means that uh, they don't figure to be an aristocracy of the gypsy kind. They are representing themselves as being apart, and totally apart, not on the same hierarchy. Of course, there are negative and positive discourses about other gypsies, but they don't put themselves in this game. They are of another kind, and another, another nature. And I think every gypsy society do like that. 
in the Gabor case, this is much more explicit and this is embodied in, uh, uh, in the clauses and in uh, a national discourse. But this is a point important. They don't present it as the authentic Jews. No, we are the Roma, the Roma, the whole one. And the other, they can be one million to ten million uh, of another kind, just like the Gadget in a certain way. There are all the kind of discourses about the Tsigani that you can find in Romania. All kinds, positive, negative, neutral. When they cross in Adereni, for example, because I took the car many much mine between Deva and Tegumures, and Adereni is in the, on the road. They were speaking about the, what was there, and what they saw on TV. For them it was a, a public, uh, uh, public matter, not, it was n never a uh, token like as a, a, an element of their personal history. Yeah. Not at all. But they speak about it, just as everybody in Romania. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, I, have, I have a lot of questions now. We talk about the theories, rather than as inspired as we speak to them, the question of how they work. Um, I mean, are we looking at the city in terms of categories and then learning about groupies? Or we are trying to see how that is really to work in the real life and how the ethnicity works with these categories. And what to do with it? How does it help to understand the Romans by it? So, the fact that we have some categories, there are some understanding themselves, different from the others, they don't necessarily wrong, but, uh, or the others are not necessarily wrong. I mean, yeah. Maybe okay, you go from the late in the Methodologically, it's almost ethnographically based, you know. I'm just asking the questions, but how to observe it, how to do it in the real practice, in social practice. To make field work with the people and to be with them when they have, as in everyday life, connections and social relations with everybody, with some so called Tsigani, with Gaji of different kinds. This is the material, the social relations in context. And in my bottom, it's only ethnography can, uh, a long time ethnography can permit to, to observe this kind of relations and to cross, uh, to get across the, the uh, stereotype, stereotype discourses. You know? I don't know if I answer your question, but <laughs> maybe we can speak later. It was a question how to observe it. Or? Yes, I know. You don't want to talk about hierarchies. You said that they, you said that they, they feel themselves apart and they don't want to, in, to enter into hierarchies. But in the same time, you speak about aristocracy and all this. Uh, the story with Vickers is about uh, hierarchy into the community, yeah, within the community, there. within the community. And also, uh, if you remember this discussion that we had when you came in Geneva, when uh, actually uh, one Gabor confronted a, a, a Roma from Ukraine, a, a woman, and uh, he said, uh, uh, my parents wouldn't want me to marry a girl like you. Uh, this is about hierarchy, social hierarchy. So why don't you accept this? Uh, I mean, why? There are two kinds of hierarchies. So. Of course, there is, and it is a central element of the national uh, identity, national Gabor identity, is uh, the game about the nobility uh, among the families. And there is a hierarchy moving and relative between the different vices. But the idea that they don't represent themselves as the aristocrats of the Roma society, like a, a, big, a, a big category, but as a totality of aristocrats only. You know, this is the ideology of the, of the group in, in a way. 
But of course, in the, the other hand, you can find much more discourses, negative discourses about the Romunguri and the other kind of Tsigani, not Roma, of Tsigani. But there is a hiatus, there is a, a gap between these two kinds of, uh, of uh, hierarchy, or uh, kind of uh, put order, positive and negative orders, in the orderness, I think. One step in the long line of anthropology is struggling against the category of Roma. You know, there are so many studies that it's more complex, and it's, uh, I think these are very important, and I've done a lot of anthropologists that you know, good and good, etc. But at the same time, there is a nation building process, which is uh, happening in the late 20th or early 21st century. It is happening, and I think it is, uh, it is what many anthropologists think so that micro that is only the intellectuals versus the real people who see all the and they don't have anything. It's a bit more complex, especially in different communities meet in immigration context. So there are very documented cases. And for example, in Germany, since we have been in Roma communities, uh, the Solanovi of the Canadian community have been asylum seekers. So I think it's uh, it's maybe a bit too simple to say that on the one hand there are the intellectuals in the international market union and the real everyday gypsies. So yeah. yeah, you're right, it's not so simple. <laughs> If I'm going to have a comment, yeah, please. Have to 
describe that things are much more, more, more complex. But what uh, extent and how can we, or what kind of position can we build in trying to help? Because uh, you see what I mean. And it is part of the story. It's, it's a very tricky uh, situation. It's not only Roma. It was and uh, still will be in other places. Uh, on one side, on the other side, and this is really a, a, a question to you. So, uh, not all Roma groups in Romania have a national discourse as the government. Maybe it is one of them. Speciality. And it's interesting to see when and how and why this national discourse raised. Yeah. I can just put it on a few elements. First, uh, it appears just like the reinvention of the national and traditional costume. After what the community uh, spread off from their or original territory of Tirgu Muresh, from the 50s for the first ones and almost for the 60s and 70s. The, uh, the families uh, spread off in all the Transylvania and, 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 and uh, uh, far. This is one element for me. Uh, the second one is the, 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 the augmentation of the national discourse is uh, almost after the revolution in the 90s, when the Roma issue became in the front of the public arena. And it was a matter to say, yes, we are gypsies, maybe, if you say, but we are a different kind of gypsies because this, this is objectively, we have a national discourse. We have our ethnic. We are not Calderari, uh, Spoitori, Zabraji, or I don't know why, those all kind of ethnonym which are much more uh, ambiguous because we are the Gabo at all. And see, this is a second element. And this is a social and historic, of course, uh, different very important element of context to understand the emergence of this kind of discourse among the, the government. So we don't have Roma societies out of time because they are nature, particular nature. No, we always have combination and construction of different kind of discourse about who we are. In the case of Gabori, it match, it fits with the ethnical approaches. In much more Roma groups, it takes other way because there are other histories, there are other regions, there are other, uh, other experiences of the other ways. I wanted to say something else, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, it's a big issue. Yeah. We'll come back to it probably. But now we uh, will go, thank you very much again, to the next presentation.